So my paper in this presentation is based on social media and how activists use it to how to use it. If you don't know what social media is, it is websites and applications that people use to connect with each other, share stuff, and activists use it to come together and use it to have protests, uh, spread their message, their opinions about what they believe in, and stuff like that. Uh, my thesis was more on the idea of the uh, with social media now there's hyper connectivity and that how that could actually hurt us and more specifically hurt protests and activists uh, more than help. For my paper I looked at uh, two specific groups for this, Occupy Wall Street and Black Lives Matter. The first one to actually used social media to uh, get people to come together and protest was Occupy Wall Street around 2011, at the end of 2011. Uh, people used to come together to do protests or stage in and stay at parks um, and they would spread their message online mainly through Facebook and Twitter. However, after the police came in and kicked them out of the parks and stuff, uh, people online didn't really have any interest in the movement anymore, so it kind of just died off. The other group I looked at is uh, Black Lives Matter. It's been around for about two or three years now and this is the main focus one. The other one was just for one of the first ones, but this one is a bit different. The, uh, the movement faces two main issues that I've noticed, and that is it is lasting too long, and because of it, it's lasting too long and getting nothing done, and the baggage it faces. So it's been around for two or three years, as I mentioned. Yet, there's no been major legislation passed, no big changes that, uh, that, that help them achieve their goals. Nothing's been really done. Uh, the most you could say is that some police departments are cracking down and maybe got body cameras, but that's about it. Another issue with it lasting too long is that people become complacent. When they first hear Black Lives Matter, it's like, oh my god, what are they doing? What, what are they upset about? You want to listen to them. Now it's like, oh, they're talking about something again whatever. It's because if you're on so long, people are used to seeing it around. Usually if there's a movement or an actual protest, it should be quick and fast and make sure people know what your message is and what you want to get done. Now it's like, oh, well, we know what they're talking about again and everyone's tired of it. The other issue is the baggage that the, what you could say, I guess you could say the PR, the brand name of Black Lives Matter, if you want to talk marketing, in that there have been some rogue people in the name of Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, they say they want to kill cops, stuff like that, kill white people, and that's not what the movement stands for, but they're saying it in the name of it, that goes on social media. Well, now you have this big debate and discussion, and it ruins, it ruins the movement. It does paint an ugly picture that shouldn't be there in the first place, especially with the basic message of it. Um, this leads to, on social media, with the hyper-connectivity, everyone's arguing now. Everyone's arguing about what they say, what they don't say, what they really mean, and instead of actually discussing how to achieve these changes. Everyone's just arguing on Facebook, on Twitter, and with the recent election and Donald Trump and stuff, that hasn't helped it at all anyway. So what I found was overall is that social media is like fire. It can help you, but it can also burn you. Um, in the case of both, it did help uh, for a time, like by Wall Street, it helped get people to come to parks, protest, and all that. And for Black Lives Matter, when the initial shootings were coming out and being reported on, people who were organizing protests, it did work for a point and get a message across. But there hasn't been a major group right now that has used social media to achieve massive change. That hasn't happened yet. There have been some that have achieved change. Um, different one would be the uh, Arab Spring around the same time as Occupy Wall Street. Uh, where people use social media and the internet to help in Egypt specifically, topple the, you know, take out the dictator and stuff like that. But that was years ago. Recently, there hasn't been much change. Uh, Flint, Michigan, everyone cared about Flint, Michigan. Everyone donated water initially, but there are still some lingering issues from that crisis. So from here, you see the uh, current major social media apps, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Um, this down here is just a picture of a Black Lives Matter page on Facebook. You know, if you go on Facebook, you see that page. And then this is what I wrote here. And that's really about it. Um, down here, uh, what, can change, what changes can people take to improve is it's going to be a slower growth, but the slower growth should be 
you start with a small group of people, you understand what the message is for the protest or for the movement, and then over time you add people that you feel you can trust. Like, uh, look at Black Lives Matter here. It's a page, anyone can like it, anyone can comment on it. That's not good, it needs to be more controlled. Because uh, if it's more controlled, you have a controlled message, that way when you do post something, it's concise and everyone agrees on it. It makes it easier for people to either like or dislike the group instead of just anyone posting whatever they want in the name of something. Um, also included in the video will be a picture of the full poster board so you can look at it uh, in more detail since it's kind of blurry this far out. And that's it for my presentation. Thank you.